Good morning. It's a great day to be alive in Jesus. I've talked to you in the past about forgiveness. And sometimes when we have those issues where we can't forgive and we've talked about being willing to forgive and going back as far as we need to go back to be willing to be willing to forgive, to be willing to be willing to be willing to forgive. Well, I want to revisit forgiveness today. I want to talk about forgiveness, reconciliation, and trust. See, there's a difference between forgiving and trusting. It's a common problem that we often have, and it's one of the reasons why many times we don't engage in the conversations that would lead to forgiveness because we fear that it means we might have to trust. So I want to share with you something that I heard Henry Cloud say the other day, and I just thought it was so profound because he was talking about the difference between forgiveness, reconciliation, and trust. He said, first of all, one of the things to help you understand, when you're talking about forgiveness, you're talking about the past. You're talking about an event, something that occurred in the past that needs to be resolved, it needs to be worked through. And so the forgiveness is always about dealing with things in the past. It's part of letting go. It's when you get to the place where you are able to offer and extend forgiveness to the one that's offended you, you need to engage them and begin the conversation. God has offered forgiveness to all of us. And as a matter of fact, in, in the scriptures, we, sign, we find that in Matthew 6, 12, it says, And forgive us our sins, just as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And so there's a correlation between our receiving forgiveness from the Father and our willingness to forgive our brother and sister. Matthew 18, 35 says, And this is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. And so we realize that being able to forgive is more than just lip service. It's a, it, there's a dimension of forgiving that goes deep to the very core. And when we have forgiven at, at, at a heart level, we have set ourselves free uh, from the offense. Reconciliation, however, is about the present. So forgiveness is about the past. Reconciliation is about the present. It occurs when we have engaged in a conversation, extending forgiveness, receiving forgiveness, and then after forgiveness has been received and accepted, then it takes two to reconcile. It takes two to reconcile. It only takes one to ask for forgiveness. If the person's not willing to forgive you, all you have to do is initiate and ask to be forgiven and, and request forgiveness. But for reconciliation to occur, it takes both of you. There's a, there's a meeting together at a, at a similar level of saying, yes, I've heard your request for forgiveness. I grant you forgiveness. I apologize for any part that I had in the event. And now let's reconcile. Now the problem is, that's often why we don't extend forgiveness. Because we don't feel safe with the person and the fear of reconciliation we're not ready for. I want to encourage you today that you can take the first step of requesting forgiveness or extending forgiveness without going to the second step of reconciliation. The third one is trust, and that has to do with the future. For us to get to the level of trust in a relationship, it is where we have to risk that what happened in the original offense could happen again. And are you willing to open yourself up to that possibility? So a person must show that through his actions that there is a trustworthiness before you extend an invitation for trust. Before you can trust again, there must be some signs of trustworthiness. And this is biblical as well. We find in Matthew chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Therefore bear fruit in keeping with repentance. 
That's what John the Baptist said to the Jewish leaders that were coming out to try to catch him. And he says, you know, if you're, if you're going to repent, there must be the fruits of repentance. There must be the brokenness, the sorrow, uh, the, the humbling of oneself in order for there to be reconciliation and then to move on to build into trust. Proverbs 4.23, one of my favorite verses, is above all else, guard your heart, for out of it flows the wellsprings of life. So in reality, when you're looking at forgiveness, you're looking at uh, reconciliation, you're looking at trust, these could be three separate conversations. And if you're in a conversation and you're extending forgiveness, but your heart is not to the place where you can be reconciled, but you can extend forgiveness, and you get to that place and the person says, yes, I forgive you, now let's work on our relationship. And you say, no, today, today's enough to just talk about forgiveness. And we'll pick up at another time a conversation about reconciliation. You always have the power to do that. And sometimes if we realize we have the opportunity and the authority to say, no, let's just work on the forgiveness and later we'll work on reconciliation and trust that might get us moving more on conversations of repentance and forgiveness if we know that we don't have to move to step two and three until we've had step one established. I think from the foundation in our relationships of repentance that we can then move on to reconciliation and trust, but never ahead of where your heart's at where you're able to process, what you're able to uh, integrate into your life. Take it one conversation at a time. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the gift of forgiveness. Thank you that you have forgiven us and that we are so forgiven that we have the ability based on the grace that we've received by you forgiving us to extend it to others. I pray, Father, that those that hear this would have the wisdom of the Holy Spirit so that they don't put themselves back into harm's way, but that they deal with first things and give them the grace to have the conversation to forgive. In Jesus' name, amen. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come. Oh,